bird. I put that water over there for the, the real birds to find. But if you're thirsty, you can go drink from it too. <laughs> so it's about 113 degrees right now outside. Um, real feel. It's only like 91 if that. There you go, bird. On the actual like temperature scale, Fahrenheit that is. But it feels like about 110 plus here uh, with all the humidity. So I put out a big pool of water because there were so many birds landing right here on this little tree, panting from the heat. And I saw some birds drinking from the uh, runoff from air conditioning units on the sides of buildings. So I put this big bowl out there to try to attract some of the birds and give them some water. But it appears to have attracted Bird the Cat instead. <laughs> but at least he has some nice fresh water to drink that's nice and cool. So hopefully that'll be good for him on such a hot day too, especially with all that black fur. I just hope he doesn't knock it down because that balcony is hanging over like a bunch of uh, awnings for the shops below. So be careful, Bird. I'm glad you're making use of the water though. It's very hot today. If you ask me what I've been up to today, the answer is unfortunately not work and unfortunately not very interesting. I have been cleaning the apartment today. <laughs> Cleaning the apartment and getting eaten alive by mosquitoes when I was actually sweeping the outside just a second ago So there's so many mosquitoes. I apparently am delicious to them I need to never leave this apartment again without spraying my legs and arms down with the mosquito repellent very actively They are everywhere and they will get you That's kind of one of the downsides to the days when it doesn't rain here in Taipei is you're gonna get eaten alive by mosquitoes and I have been tidying up because we unfortunately had an ant issue in the kitchen that's mostly because this is a very old apartment, so there's a lot of it that's just kind of open to the outside. A lot of windows, a lot of places that we could have some little ants invade our kitchen. And you guys don't know it about Chips, but he hates bugs. All bugs, all anthropods, insects, whatever you're going to call them, he doesn't like them. So he was a little bit upset and he never gets upset. This morning when we had a little trail of ants working its way into the kitchen, so I scrubbed everything extra hard and have been cleaning and sweeping and trying to make it nice and to be completely honest with you, I'm looking for my shawl. <laughs> My little brown shawl that I wear all the time that I use I mean is it like under the pillow somewhere that I use to like put over my shoulders is missing This is a 300 square foot apartment. How am I missing something? How can I lose something in this apartment? I don't understand Maybe it's under the pillows on the couch that chips moved around But I have been cleaning everything all day searching for it I'll have to go through the laundry room again to see if he accidentally picked it up to do like laundry for me But I need my little shawl because it covers up my shoulders and my arms and <laughs> That's actually really important for me because it's one of the ways I'm able to wear my tank tops Oh and boss is coming down. Ah oh, boss Oh, boss, you look so cool when you come down like that. Do you see boss in the background? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. We're coming for the food. <laughs> hey, boss. Ni hao, boss. Oh, my goodness. And we just had someone visit that I wasn't expecting. I'll tell you guys about that in a second, too. Let me try to sit so you guys can watch boss. But yeah, when we came to Taipei, I knew it was going to be really hot. The real feel for the temperature is often about 109 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit super duper hot right <laughs> so i thought that people would be wearing like sleeveless shirts and they would be wearing shorts the way that they definitely do back in america and in hawaii you were lucky if people were like wearing anything you could think of being clothes even when it was only in the 80s in hawaii so here i was thinking that if we came to taipei i would want to have lots of shorts and i would want to have lots of tank tops so I brought lots of shorts and tank tops and only one pair of these longer khaki pants and I brought um, only a couple shirts that have sleeves and it turns out the dress style here is very 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 modest. So well like not terribly terribly modest but it's super duper modest so instead of everybody running around in shorts and tank tops the majority of the women have long pants and long sleeve shirts on even in this heat. Maybe that's because they're trying to find defense from the mosquitoes, but I really noticed, and Chips has even commented, all the clothing styles, the arms are covered, um, coming up to the neck, like no collarbone showing, but like coming up to the neck like this is common style for all of the dresses. Dresses are really like 
uh, I, I think you would call them like uh, frock style where it's like one big long dress and it doesn't really have a lot of shape to it. It's kind of cutesy, uh, very simple, very muted patterns, very floral. Um, yeah, like a lot of muted colors is what I see for the most part. And it has a dash of elegance about it, but it's like really, really simple style. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. I was thinking heat, hot, to me, that means practically like keeping your shirts and keeping your shorts short so that you don't get super hot. But again, like as I, I fuss at my mosquito bites all over my legs, maybe that's to prevent the mosquitoes from getting you. What do I know? But I felt really self-conscious when we got here and here I was with shorts and tank tops. So I've been wearing my little shawl. Bye boss. I've been wearing my little shawl over my shoulders. Is it back here? <laughs> like under the pillows? <laughs> when we go out because nobody's sleeveless here. I have not seen a single person other than our landlady who wore anything sleeveless. And she was dressed up in really fancy like cocktail dresses coming from an art gallery auction or something like that when she came to visit. So I think that's an exception. <laughs> So when we go out, I wear my long pants and I wear my little shawl so that I don't feel like I'm being uh, impolite. You, you, I want to just make sure I'm not being impolite like the foreigner just going out with bare arms, which is probably not a big deal at all. The only people I have seen with like shorts are actually the other foreigners on campus. <laughs> And I'm sure it's not a big deal, but it's just one of those things where you already know that you are going to stand out and you already know that people are going to see your behavior as a reflection of where you're from. So I want to try to be respectful, which means I want to wear my shawl <laughs> and I don't know where I have put it. So uh, it's going to be really funny if it's like in the background of the videos as I'm moving around. But that's what I've been doing today. Um, Chips being upset about something is so rare that that was kind of like I dropped everything I was gonna get to the bottom of the amp problem And I've been having just a hard time kind of getting motivated today Even though I got a ton of stuff done yesterday, and I really wanted to spend today going out and exploring with you guys But I was laying down writing in my joy journal um, No matter what I have an alarm on my little tea leaf my little tablet that I have that goes off twice a day And that's my permission to sit down for a few minutes and joy journal no matter how far behind I am on work or what's happening that's my permission to sit down and write three things it can be just three words but that's my joy journal time and when I was writing in the joy journal I thought when we were thinking about coming to Taiwan am I spending my days the way I thought I would and the answer is not really <laughs> I'm staying home a lot more and I'm working a lot more um, than I thought I would be when we came here. And I really love that the only reason that I can really reflect on that, and the only reason I really feel a sense of accountability for that, is because of the vlog channel. So I decided while I was writing in my joy journal that today is the last day I wanna spend sitting in the little office spot I've got and spending the majority of the day working. I want to spend more time at least spending an hour out uh, when it's not super hot and if it is I'm gonna take my little umbrella as a parasol because the UV is ridiculous I could feel it giving me a sunburn while I was doing dishes just through the kitchen window no joke it was it was ridiculously intense but I'm gonna have my little parasol and I can always dip into some shops and kind of get out of the way but it really helped to think about you guys and what I want to show you of my trip here to Taiwan. Sometimes, oh, boss is on a tree, do you see that? Boss, what are you doing? Sometimes it's gonna be, oh, boss jumped up, climbed up that tree that's still shaking and wiggled onto the roof. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, sometimes it's gonna be little, uh, little days just at the house looking frantically for where my shawl has gone so I can go out in public. Oh, I can hear the cats up on the roof. That's funny. And other days it's going to be going out and finding tons of egrets at Da'an Park. This weekend we have plans for eating delicious vegan food. We found a Facebook group called uh, Taipei is a slice of vegan cake and it's dedicated to showing off all of the delicious cakes and desserts you can get from the vegan places here in Taiwan and especially Taipei. Oh my gosh, they look so good. We found tons of new restaurants to try out that aren't even easy to find on Happy Cow based off of that Facebook group. So if you're vegan or vegetarian and you want to know where some delicious desserts or some really great food is, look up the Facebook group because Facebook is 
what everybody uses here. All of the businesses don't have their own website really, they have their own Facebook. Everybody that we pass holding their phone in the streets, they're not looking at Instagram like they are back home. They're on Facebook. Everybody, our driver, our Uber driver, or whatever you're gonna call him, I guess he was a taxi that we took from the airport to here when we first got here. While he was driving, he had his phone on the dashboard and he was looking at Facebook. So everybody uses Facebook here. And uh, we found the Facebook group, Taipei is a slice of vegan cake, and it has so many amazing desserts on it. I don't even know how I managed to get there. It was totally by accident. But we found like easily two dozen new restaurants that are close to us to try out. So that was really exciting. We're planning on trying to hit a couple of them, uh, maybe this weekend, but especially the museum. Chips, being the historian that he is, is thrilled to be this close to some of the most interesting piles, uh, most interesting archives of ancient Chinese artifacts in the world. And that's actually at the university here, the national, or not the university, the national museum. So he's really, really excited to go to the museum and look at all of those artifacts. And we're gonna do that this weekend and maybe even go to the botanical garden. So we do have things planned, but <laughs> Yeah, some days it's just me with uh, the more laid back uh, house maneuvers and babbling into the camera about joy journaling and, and cats and I can't believe I lost my shawl. I mean, this is only a 300 square foot apartment. Where could it have gone? There's only so many places for it to hide. I'm gonna have to look for it some more because I don't want to go out in public with my shoulders bared. That feels really weird here. <laughs> Just, you already stand out, you know what I mean? I don't want to stand out even more or seem like I'm being disrespectful. That would just make me feel really, ugh, I'm blushing. Just think, look at how much I'm blushing, oh my goodness. <sighs> So that's kind of where my day is at, even though I swore up and down that I would make things more interesting for you guys. At least I did manage to see that magpie being chased by a bunch of other birds this morning. That made things really interesting and had me so excited thinking about how much I absolutely adore looking for birds, looking for little wild discoveries like that. But that is why when I was writing in my joy journal, I've come to the resolution that I'm going to need to spend by myself at least, uh, if it's not the weekend and Chips and I have been chewing together, at least an hour just wandering the city. Because when I get home, if I didn't use this precious opportunity to do that, I'm going to have a lot of regrets, you know what I mean? I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit sad. I'm going to be like, really? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you just take the initiative? Why did you let needing to get Slime Rancher done for the day when you have 5,000, almost 200 videos in the archives now, why did I let that take precedence? And it's really hard to juggle the opportunities that I have here in Taiwan, being able to adventure and explore. Also, a little bit of a loneliness I feel when Chips is gone. He and I, like, work and live together side by side all day long. I know you guys don't see him, but... It's really uncommon for him to be gone all day like this. And now that he's not coming home for lunch anymore because it saves him a ton of time, he's able to get a lot of work done on campus. He gets hours worth of work done just in the hour and a half that he was taking to walk back here, get lunch, and come visit during the middle of his day. This is much better for him, but man, I miss him. When he's home and doing his PhD stuff at home, he's only gone for like a few hours every week. So we're not, we're not like one of those dependent couples, just it's like, where's my, my, my buddy? He's gone. So it's a little bit of that too. But yeah, this has gotten very babbly. As you can tell, I'm kind of all over the place, but I guess there's some days like this. And Honestly, I'm just glad that my mood is, is perking up after the bumpy weekend that I had. So yeah, there I am with my babble. I won't keep you guys much longer, but that's kind of where I'm at. Today I was battling ants and looking for my shawl because I don't want my arms to be bared because no one has their arms. I had like this, this shirt being this low, it, that doesn't happen. The shirts up here, like, they're all at least this high. I can't wear shirts like that because it feels like they're choking me because I'm not used to it. So I don't have any shirts where it comes up above my clavicles anymore. I used to because I grew up where, like, that was modesty, was having shirts that would cover up to your clavicle. But I don't have any shirts that do that anymore because <laughs> they're so uncomfortable. So... Yeah, I already stand out for that, so I really want my shawl, and I don't know where I lost it. So, uh, 
this is such a small place but that and then oh and my surprise guest so we have a door that people can buzz into and that's the the bottom door at the bottom of the stairs and then we have another door that needs a second lock up here at the top and there was somebody buzzing in and I know that chips isn't due home for another hour so I was a little perplexed about who it was I picked up the phone and I was like hello and then the other end was like ni hao and then it launched into a bunch of Chinese that I didn't understand because I, I don't understand pretty much any Chinese and um, I had no idea what to do I just kept being like I'm sorry we're currently just renting this place I'm so sorry and finally I realized the voice was trying to say in uh, very very heavily accented English open the door and I was like okay I hope I'm doing the right thing maybe it's just one of our neighbors and I, I hit the uh, the door unlock button because I just was so flustered I was like I'm just gonna have to err on the side of this is the right thing to do maybe because at least there's another door so if it's somebody coming to try to break in which is not going to happen at all but you know when you have no idea what's happening your mind's going all over the place so I assumed that was supposed to happen. Maybe it was a neighbor who lost their key. I want to be a good neighbor. I was I was all over the place trying to figure out what was happening. And then there was a knock on our door up here, which is a metal door. So it has this ominous like dong 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 dong. And I was totally like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I put on my outdoor slippers and uh, like zigzagged out there. And it was the meter man. So thankfully it was just the guy coming to check our meter. And there was a lot of she she and thank you. You. like he was saying thank you in very heavy accent and I was saying she she in what must be a really terrible heavy accent and we were just bowing and bobbing to each other and then he went over to the meter and left but it was amazingly funny because I was just we couldn't talk to each other other than just those basic things and it was just obvious what he was here for though because he had the little meter reader and everything so he came in and left and um, that was that was my unexpected visitor of the day but I swept the porch after that to kind of like cool off and be like, whew, that was interesting. And it just made me realize even more how grateful I'm going to be when I go home after having been here to be able to speak the same language as the people who are outside because it's just something that you kind of know intellectually you take for granted but until you're here and you really feel like you're almost back to being a little baby again not able to understand people and not able to communicate with people other than just your smile and gestures and these very basic phrases you really take it all for granted you know what i mean so i'm glad i'm glad for that i'm glad i i will go home and i won't take that for granted anymore and that it can be an important life lesson that i knew intellectually that now i know practically but yeah, there's my resolution. So today I stayed home, like I chased down a bunch of ants, I cleaned the house, I lost my shawl, still looking for my shawl, and I let the meter man in. <laughs> and so for me, it's been a lot of adventure, but I know I want it to be more adventure. So it's kind of hard, you guys know, me being a workaholic, to step away from going, I have to get X number of series for the main channel done a day, but just thinking about what I want to share with you guys on the vlog channel every day and thinking about what I want to put down in my joy journal made me realize that when we go home in a month and a half, I want to be able to look back at this and, and be proud of how I pushed myself. And for somebody who was once the most shy, an anxious little, like, oh my gosh, I, I was so agoraphobic, I wouldn't leave the house, I wouldn't, I, I mean, I've told that story before. When I was younger, like in my early 20s, I didn't leave my home, my basement bedroom in my parents' home. Uh, for two years, I left a grand total of seven times. The house, yeah. And now here I am, getting ready to hopefully leave for close to an hour every day and just wander the city so I can take out a camera and talk to myself as I adventure all on my own. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? But all right, enough of my babbling. It was just an interesting laid back day and I'm very excited that I at least saw the magpie and I will let you guys know what's going to happen tomorrow when hopefully we'll get a little bit of adventure under our wings and we have to be home in time to let chips in guys. If we're not home in time to let chips in, 
then he's gonna be stuck out on the street like dodging motor cars and staring at the roasted duck stand that's right next to our front door with entire roasted ducks which as vegans we, we kind of just blank it out as we walk past so I don't want to leave him there and that means we we have a little bit of a time limit on our adventures uh, when we're out and about just you and I together but hopefully we can find something fun and maybe even bring something home for chips so I think it'll be fun update I found my shawl now I can be happy and relieved and hopefully respectful of my own weird little way again.